don't know your name. I apologize. As the rebel leader, I have to be careful. I am the rightful queen, Unuratu. Edsley, you still owe me a scouting report. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there was one thing this morning. Yes? I saw the kind of debating. Look around if you wish. Mesoamerican people use this stone as a tool for processing grain and seeds. Mm, impossible. I can't carry any more. Born to famine, raised in rebellion, orphaned but never alone, he rises as the sun. This describes something nearby. A lone sentry stands guard over me and his harvest. This is a traditional foot plow, still used in the Andes today, even outside Paititi. Sometimes the simple ways are still the best. The new methods of agriculture introduced by the cult of Kukul Khan have only succeeded in destroying more crops. First, the bee colonies collapsed. Then the cocoa crop failed. The earth is too damaged for anything but corn to grow, and the stalks are flimsy. We must take action, or Paititi will suffer a tremendous famine. Them. Enough, Taki. You lost your dice. Fine. But don't. Are you okay? No. Pisco the dead took my dice. And no one believes me. But he took them. A dead man took your dice. Are you sure you didn't lose them? Ugh. You're as bad as the rest of them. I'm sorry. You're right. I'll tell you what. I'll pay very close attention. And if I see Pisco the dead, I'll ask for your dice back. Really? You believe me? It won't be the first time the dead seem to speak to me.
What were you doing with your friends near the wilderness fires? Just looking for a kite. Do not go near the wilderness Ah, my love! A chai kupuchil jan al mak. It's difficult to make out. People settled between two rivers. They weren't alone. However, these outsiders don't appear dangerous. Beautiful. I don't recognize you. What are you doing here? Where did you get that tunic? It was given to me by Unuratu. Oh, you are the Queen's guest? I meant no offense. Please, you must forgive me. <sighs> it's all right. Don't worry. How may I help you? Here you go. The gods favor us both. Very good. Here you go. I await your return. Will you trade? Please. I have barely made enough to offer in tribute. Tribute to who? The cult of Kukulkan, of course. They demand half of all profits earned on market day. But if they think I tried to short them... I understand. Thank you, Ishiki. Will you trade then? You have made an excellent choice, my friend. The gods favor us both. May the gods smile upon you. This elaborate pipe is sculpted to resemble Shaquatl, an Aztec serpent spirit painted in green, blue, and yellow. Its sides are decorated with semi-precious stones. The inclusion of jade indicates at least a measure of Maya influence. The bowl still reeks of burnt roots and smoke. Not an entirely unpleasant aroma. It's a bit humbling to be here in Paititi. I didn't foresee any of this. I was expecting an ancient place, artifacts, tombs. I just failed to imagine people. I was so focused on the trail of clues, I didn't even stop to wonder. I didn't mean to interfere, but Trinity's here.
Jen Makachi. Bello. This jade mask would have been placed on a noble's corpse during his funeral. The artisans were reputedly able to create an almost exact likeness of the wearer. ceremonial whistle used during human sacrifices. The sound emitted from the skull-shaped instrument has been compared to the tormented screams of the dying and the dead. Its shrill cry is said to clear a path to the underworld for the recently deceased. The death whistle has also been used as an instrument of war, its cry striking fear into the heart of the unknowing enemy. Castout knows the minds of the gods. Show me a sign. <laughs> The protectors failed and are now doomed to recover what they lost. <laughs> You sent the son to keep your arcane wisdom, but you listen. How may I serve you? <laughs> this describes something nearby. Canals bring water to the arid parts of the village, and they washed me away.
Unaratu approached the throne through the crowd. She walked beside it, but did not sit. Why do we continue to believe this lie? She asked the crowd. Kukul Khan controls this city, and I will no longer wear a smile and pretend it is any different. I will not be his puppet, trotted out to wave and smile. The guards cut her off quickly and ushered her away. Then they advanced, with weapons drawn to disperse the crowds. Villager claims to have seen a strange creature in the streets. They followed it to a walled-in alley where it disappeared. Citizen describes similar experience in Upper City. Woke to discover something trying to climb in a second-story window. When she yelled, it dropped the street and disappeared. We'll continue to monitor. Each Taka of the cult of Kukul Khan vows to tie his coat to that of you two, descendant of the Maya. Lacking any family of his own, each Taka will live with the parents of you two until such time that they have built their own home and hearth. You two vows to tie her coat to that of each Taka. She will bear him many children, which they will raise according to the traditions of both their peoples. We leave the city at first light, which is just as well, for a terrible disease has spread across it. Dead and dying line the paths and choke the streams. Many are saying it is punishment from the gods. Journal of Adelantado Perez. Twenty fourth of November, sixteen o three. I accompanied Andreas Lopez, a group of twelve soldiers and two molosses through the jungle. The directions the Jesuits provided to Trinity were excellent, so we discovered the hidden city with little difficulty. The natives of the city welcomed us warily, but we plied them with gifts, and they reluctantly allowed us to enter the city, unaware of our true intentions. Lopez has begun to search for the artifact while we distract the city's leaders. Thank <laughs> you. 
That must be the temple I saw from the riverbanks. Bats and Hun Chowen were twin brothers, older half-siblings of the more celebrated Maya hero twins. Jealous of their brothers, the monkey twins would always cheat during football matches and ruin them with their aggressive tactics. In retaliation, the hero twins lured them up a tree, a tree which never stopped growing, preventing Hun Bats and Hun Chowen from getting down. The hero twins convinced them that they could use their belts to climb down, but this turned out to be another trick and the belts became tails, turning the elder twins into monkeys. Turn mirror one to the left. Follow the beam of light to mirror two. Direct mirror two across a chamber diagonally. Return to mirror one. These seem to be instructions of some kind, but I can't make out the rest. arrived at the right time. It looks like the cultists were just here. Only the worthy may call upon Kenicha Hal. Use his light to chase the shadows from your hearts in the city itself. Amazing. This must be where they perform rituals honoring the sun. Four mirrors, each with a different marking. They're numbered. This is mirror one. I'll need to go through the central pavilion to reach the altar. last long if I fall in the water. This is mirror two. Have to hit this crystal with a beam from mirror three.
If I'm to get to Mirror 3, I'll have to turn Mirror 2. The Divine Canoe, which carries Maya souls through the underworld and into the sky, is directed by two gods. Old Stingray Paddler sits in the back of the canoe and handles the duties during the day, while Old Jaguar Paddler sits in the front and takes care of the night shift. These two gods symbolize not only light and darkness, day and night, but also the interdependence of all equal and opposite forces. If I'm to get to Mirror 3, I'll have to turn Mirror 2. <laughs> this could be the way out. If I'm to get to Mirror 3, I'll have to turn Mirror 2. If I'm to get to Mirror 3, I'll have to turn Mirror 2. If I'm to get to Mirror 3, I'll have to turn Mirror 2. If I'm to get to Mirror 3, I'll have to turn Mirror 2. Mirror 3. I should direct Mirror 3's beam away from the pavilion.
just need to line up the beam from mirror one to reach mirror two. need to line up the beam from mirror one to reach mirror two. <laughs> the pillar between mirrors one and two has two crystals. be able to hit the far pillar with Mirror One's beam. Only one mirror left to move. Shark was a very important god to the Maya. He taught them farming secrets and oversaw growing in the harvest. Generally, he was associated with all forms of fertility. He was also in charge of wind, lightning, and rain, which was caused by his tears. He was in charge of preserving springs, wells, streams, cenotes, and other sources of water. Like the aspects over which he presided, he was considered benevolent and caring, but unpredictable. Physically, Shark was depicted as a reptile with hair tangled and unruly knots, and his colors were white, red, yellow, and black, representing north, east, south, and west. This must be mirror four. Only one mirror left to move. I can get to the altar through the pavilion now. I can get to the altar through the pavilion now. There was a corridor near Mirror Four. Thank <laughs> you. 
Itzamna is the son of the Maya creator god, Hunabku. He was the god of education, responsible for inventing writing and books. This made him an essential figure in the development of Maya culture. He was also god of agriculture and created farming. He even presided over doctors, healing people with the help of his red-hot hand. Usually, Itzamna took on a reptilian aspect, but he was also known as Kinichahau, a fire McCall, who is the patron of the number four and controlled drought and disease. <laughs> The Paititians made peace with each other and followed Yaskar Yahweh, recently acclaimed as emperor, to a site in the mountains to begin anew, certain they will not make the same mistakes as those before them. <laughs> An Aztec influence mask, decorated with items native to the area around Paititi. The cast out knows the minds of the gods. Show me a sign.
Ahorita que toco el yete le da. ¡Tanca Lampil! ¡Ah! ¡Indio! ¡Pila Witch! ¡Pila Witch! ¡Te echa chiquín! The pilgrimage came to a fork of two rivers and decided to settle. They erected two pyramids and began their new lives as protectors of the box. Beautiful. The people of the Andes have been perfecting the art of weaving for thousands of years. This chuspas is a wonderful example, woven of llama or alpaca hair and traditionally used to carry cocoa leaves. It clearly highlights the weaver's skill. Beautiful. As it was foretold, heralded by the column of flame burning through the night, and the destruction of our temples, and the warnings of the weeping woman and the two-headed man, the strange warriors astride great deer arrived with the rising sun. They murdered the weak leaders and claimed the land and the people as their own. The cast out knows the minds of the gods. Show me the sign. <laughs> The 
Tolly is said to be one of the oldest games in America, played by all walks of life. Players were known to gamble all of their worldly possessions over a single round, from blankets and precious stones to their homes and even their families' freedom. The god of art and games, Mackwell Shoktal, is considered an active participant in the game, responsible with bestowing offerings upon the winner. So much on the line for a simple game. Some things never do change. Are you Pisco the dead? You can see me? At last, Pisco is seen. Are you also dead, Ishiki? No. So you are Pisco the dead? I am Pisco, servant of the gods. I'm Lara. Lara. Nice name, Lara. You are not dead. Neither are you. Oh, but I am. As a child, I was to be sacrificed. I was brought to the mountain. The ritual was completed, but... But you survived. Only my body. I am dead to all my friends and family. I live by the offerings that are left for me. I met a boy who says Pisco stole his dice. Taki? He's the son of a very arrogant noble. He insisted we play a game. He lost. I don't have many things, but I won those dice fair and square. If you want, I'll play you for them. Do you want to play a game? What's the game? Talk to five people who have been cast out. Hear their wisdom and tell me why Taki lost, and I'll give you the dice. I can do that. I can't figure out what this means. Our love was blessed by the great condor. Hello. Hello, Ishiki. It's rare to see outsiders in the city. Pisco sent me to speak with you. Ah, Pisco. I like him. You've seen other outsiders? Only one. He was handsome, gentle, and kind. We were in love. But our love is forbidden. Outlawed by the cult of Kulkulkan. That's awful. I'm sorry. I was sentenced to death. Tied to the cliffs and left to die. On the third day, I welcomed death. That's when he found me, the outsider. He freed me and treated my wounds. Who was he? I don't know his name. It's been many years, but I still hope to see him again. I often return to the cliffs, near the condor nests and collect their feathers. They remind me of him. That's a remarkable story. Thank you for trusting me with it. Thank you for listening, Ishiki. said I'm a liar. Hello? Pisco sent me. Ah, did he? Did you say you were cast out for lying? No, Ishiki. I was cast out for telling the truth. That was my mistake. What happened? Should I say I've never seen an outsider? If no one believes the truth, it never happened. What outsiders? They dress in black and have strange weapons. They hide gold. I told the cult about the gold and the outsiders. They cast me out for lying. Lying? The gold was for them. One day, the cult will be exposed for its hypocrisy. So what do you do now? I lost everything, Ishiki. My position, power, reputation. But it took me losing all that to finally see 
I had no purpose, no calling. And you found one? Yes. I serve the future by protecting the past. Queen Unuratu's line are the rightful rulers of Baititi, not the cult of Kukulkan. Everything I see, everything I hear, everything I know, now helps the rebellion. A worthy cause. I send people to steal the gold shipments the outsiders deliver from time to time. They never change the drop-off point. Sounds like you're making a difference in a lot of people's lives. Thank you for sharing. It was nice talking with you. You too, Ishiki. Maya and Inca stood shoulder to shoulder against their brothers on one side, those who wished to retreat and start fresh, and those who wished to expand and conquer neighboring territories. <laughs> Ill-suited to the local land, the Maya's agriculture techniques of slash and burn soon led to a food shortage. At the risk of starvation, they entered into treaties with local pre-Inca tribes, gaining new technologies and crops. The traders arrived, bringing new goods, and then the farmers, with new crops and techniques. Eventually, as more and more of the outsiders arrived in Paititi, they eventually took administrative control. This staff has a jury-rigged flintlock mechanism similar to those from European firearms. The cultist priests must have used this during their ceremonies to all the crowds.
Now I serve you. Hello. Are you one of the outcasts? Yes, Ishiki. I'm Chaska. I'm Lara. Pisco sent me. Pisco the dead? Sent you to me? Did you lose a game of Patoli? No. A boy Taki lost his dice. I'm trying to win them back for him. Pisco wanted me to talk to all those who've been cast out before he gives them back to me. I'm surprised he didn't try to play you for them. He is. Ah, well, all I can tell you is this. Like Pisco, I was cast out. I lost my job and my position. But not because of an accident, because of something I did and would do again. What happened? Do you have any children? No. Neither do I. I did not receive the blessing of Ishel. But for my mistress, I was the midwife for her three children. I loved them like they were my own, until I lost my position. What did you do? I'm a thief, Lara. What did you steal? A jade necklace. Why? The youngest, Kiara, she saw the necklace while visiting a friend. She took it. They were coming for her. They would have cast her out. She was an only child. I said I took it. My mistress took the necklace from me and threw it on the floor, breaking it, and cast me out instead. I'm so sorry. Don't be sad for me. I would do it again. Kiara's learned her lesson, and she has a good life. As for me, I serve Ishel now through my weaving, the way my mother taught me. And my Kiara comes to visit me sometimes. Thank you for sharing that, Chaska. Kiara was lucky to have you. Be well, Ishiki. heavy breasted woman wearing serpents around her waist. This is Kwatli Q, whose name literally means skirt of snakes. She's also called Tetio Enan, the mother of the gods. She gave birth to the moon and the stars and had over 400 children, including the sun god Witsli Apokli, who was also god of war. In addition to being a mother, she's seen as the devourer of all that lives. It's said that she was herself sacrificed to bring about this current age of creation. Hello. Are you an outcast? Yes, Ishiki. Hello. I heard you talking about a white capybara. Oh, not just one. There are many of them. Pisco sent me to speak to all those who were cast out. You're a hunter. I am now. I was once a farmer, but that wasn't the life for me. I felt trapped. Forced to live up to the duties and expectations brought down by my family. I finally refused and went my own way. And a white capybara was responsible. No, Ishiki. I heard of them. One night they assaulted my field, trampled everything, but I did nothing to stop them. I just watched. They gave me an idea. A herd of these capybara, all white. What if I could hunt them? 
What if I could finally get away from the fields? So you did it. Best decision I ever made. My father disowned me, gave the farm to my sister, but that's fine with me. I'm a hunter now. They call me Paimo the White. <laughs> Thank you for the entertaining story, Paimo. Thank you, Ishiki. I think we have a... Hello. Hello. You're Lara, aren't you? Uh... Pisco sent you. He did. I'm Moreika. <laughs> that was the second time I heard your name today, Lara. The cultists are talking about you. You're the one who started the cleansing. The one who found the key of Shakshel. I am. Oh, don't feel bad, child. The cleansing was long overdue. It must be decided. Do we continue or begin again? That's not an easy decision. Did you hear that, Remak? Deciding the fate of the world is not easy. <laughs> I like this one. You're right, Lara. It isn't. And if the cult of Kukulkan decides, they will enslave us all and call it protection. Won't they, Remak? <laughs> he doesn't talk much. The cult is acting out of fear. Fear of what? Fear of the outside. Fear of change. But the same threats that are outside are in all of us. Fear is the enemy, not change. Change is the only constant. But look at me rambling on, Remak. The lady must want to buy something to help in her search. Thank you. Hmm, good deal. Thank you. Enjoy it. Thank you. Enjoy it. Thank you. Come find me if you need anything else. I'm not sure. The dialect is familiar, but something's not right. Peace, Carl? You've already spoken to them, haven't you? I have. But you still don't see it. They all had hope. You need to do better than that if you want to win the game, Lara. Hope is one thing, but all those who have been cast out have thrived in their new lives, despite their circumstances. Even you, Pisco. Well, I am the best Patoli player Paititi has ever known. <laughs> Not bad for a dead man. <laughs> Not bad at all. So again, what did you learn? I learned that sacrifice can make your life better. That you shouldn't be constrained by the legacy of your family. You can find your own path. Love is stronger than death and you need to believe in something greater than yourself. But ultimately, you can't control everything. 
It's what you make of your situation that defines you. Well said, Lara. You're sure you're not dead? <laughs> Ducky thinks he lost his dice because he was unlucky. But it's not the throw of the dice that wins the game. It's the skill of the player. I see that now. What did you think of Moreka, the outcast? She was expecting me. She seemed to know quite a bit about me. Ah, she knows a lot about everything, Ishiki. She has the most wondrous items in her shop. Artifacts known only to the gods. I saw... You were lucky you found her. She often travels outside of Paititi, gathering inventory. She seemed the most... optimistic. Of course she is. We have a saying in Paititi. We all create destiny. We don't choose our circumstances, only our actions. A lesson my friend Taki needs to learn. Well played. Thank you, Pisco. I'll bring the dice back to Taki. Amaru returned for his brother's funeral, inconsolable during the burial and immovable after. The next day, however, he cut swiftly through the city. He unmasked the cult's leader, exposing them as outsiders. It is time for the people of Paititi to take control of their city, he said, holding a decapitated head in one hand and the bloody knife in the other. No longer will we bow to outsiders. Why? Pila witch. Why, ma? Pila witch in kick. Choco waffle. Pila witch. I found your dice, Taki. Oh, thank you. Didn't you say Pisco stole your dice? Everyone knows Pisco steals. According to him, you wanted to play a game and you lost. He wouldn't let me play again. Just one more roll and I would have won. Pisco wanted you to know. It's not the throw of the dice that wins the game. It's the skill of the player. Now that I have my dice back, I can practice more. Thanks again, Ishiki. Hakan! What is this? Cultist, waiting for their deity to appear. When the catastrophes come, the god Kukulkan must be sacrificed to power the sun. Otherwise, the world dies. Sacrifice a god? The sacrifice is my duty. But this cult leader will take my place and attempt to become the god. He believes we can remake the world and live in a paradise of his design. Remake the world? What? I've heard those words before. There he is!
I know him. That's Dr. Dominguez. Behold! The instrument of our unity and salvation! Soon, our dreams of peace and safety will be realized! They already call him Kukulkan, but his real name is Amaru. He was born here, but raised, lied to, by outsiders. The people believe in him. But you don't. My late husband, Saidi, was his brother. They had differences over the future of Paititi. When Saidi died, Amaru devoted himself to the cult. You have seen the storm. You are worried about worse to come. I ensure you that Paititi will persevere and thrive forever! I know him well. If Amaru is successful, all of us who disagree will never see this paradise. The rebels will be discarded. Not if they don't find the box. Yes. Our best hope is to find it first. Perhaps Amaru might still be brought to see love and reason. Death to the outsiders! Retribution will come! Hakan, enough! We must strike while the snake is within reach. Justice will be met in good time. Do not jeopardize our rebellion for the sake of impulse. Scout ahead. We'll meet you at the edge of the mountain. Last warning. <laughs> Follow Esley. Your clothing won't hide you long from these guards. Okay, I'll find the box. You've been warned to keep the peace. I was just out for a pleasant stroll with my son. <laughs> Amaru is losing his patience. It won't happen again. Jonah, can you answer? Yeah, me and Uchi set up camp. Everything's okay. Dominguez is here. He's the leader of the cult of Kukul Khan. That's what Unaratu's rebels are fighting. What? He's been here for years. Trinity controls Paititi. Whoa. I'm going to the Eye of the Serpent. We have to get the box before the next cataclysm hits. I don't have enough space for that. Where is my mother? She's settling matters between the guards and Hakan. What's it like outside Paititi? Well, a lot of things. It's a very big world. Bigger than Paititi? <laughs> Bigger than 100 Paititis. What? Will you take me there? I think your mother might have something to say about that. <sighs> what you're looking for is in there. How will I know when I found the right chamber? By the smell of death. If you survive, you can find your way back through the old irrigation system. I'll meet you there. Be careful. The cult often patrols there.
The surging population and lack of civil planning caused the settlement many problems. Farmers clear-cut jungle to use the fertile riverbanks for their crops, resulting in a devastating flood in the first heavy rains. Overhunting forced hunters to travel ever further to find game. Several groups, each vying for a controlling interest in the settlement, debated often fiercely on the best manner of solving these problems. Hmm. This is a formidable weapon. Heavy wood lined with sharp obsidian teeth. It could easily stop an unarmored enemy. And if the blood stains are any indication, it has. All right. All right. I don't have enough space for that. I don't think anything could have prepared me for this place. The people, their history, everything they've lived and who they are today. To hear him tell it, Amaru, Dominguez, Kugel Khan, only wants to keep Paititi safe. But I've seen the lengths he'll go to, the murder and cruelty. I have to stop him. Through there. Having not heard from Lopez, some among the leadership began to have their doubts about him. Our group dispatched south to investigate. We sent the natives in first, uncertain those in the city had not killed Lopez on his arrival. They returned with reports of how sick the city was, and we quickly formed a plan to utilize this to our advantage. Well, this must be the place Etsley mentioned. Steady, Laura, steady.
I'm going to be sick. I have no choice. Is this one of the rebels? I don't have enough space for that. There's a wit a serpent with a silver eye. I'm on track. Yes, you there. The smell keeps getting stronger. Laura, how's it going? I found another serpent with a silver eye. I must be getting close. You? Talking tattoos with Uchu. Tattoos? Yeah, you saw Uno Rajus, right? It has a heron and an eclipse on it. That might have something to do with the silver box. I don't think so. <clears throat> Looks like this is the only way. Okay, we need to destroy this barrier somehow. I can use that lever to fill this pool. I can use that lever to fill this pool. The lone figure appears in a state of peace, as though waiting for something. I can use that lever to fill this pool. Full of oil and blood, the puddle could be flammable. Need to keep moving. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Is this some kind of bloodletting chamber? I'll have to align the channels to fill the pool in front of the gate. Must have taken hundreds of sacrifices to get enough blood to fill these channels. <laughs> Too heavy. Needs more talk. I need to pull the lever to release the oil. Find the silver box. This must be what Trinity is missing. There's the little rebel prince. Get out of the way! 
Okay, I'll make my way back as soon as I can. Cheek! My lord. Did you hear about that? Full up. Can't carry any more. <laughs> this Spanish document relates one of the many stories of El Dorado, the Golden One. When the first Spanish exploration ships returned home with their holds full of gold, the news spread like wildfire, and the stories got more extravagant with each retelling. Rumours of the Golden City gave birth to countless expeditions to the New World. This describes something nearby. The waters below protect me from the waters above.
during a fierce battle, a man of two bloods throws down his weapons and, speaking with passions, convinces the other warriors to do the same. They follow him from the battlefield into the city, where they behead several merchants whose initial bickering caused the war. to trade. How can I How help things? you, Lara? What are you looking for? Enjoy it. Mm. Good deal. Good luck, Lara. These ceremonial ceramic jars are used to store corn beer or chicha. The bottom of these arpu are usually pointed to aid when pouring into smaller serving containers. This describes something nearby. The youngest of four turns his back on his brothers and able to speak as I lie in his mouth. <laughs> Unaratu must be worried. Gotcha. This is a penguin lawn ornament, painted and decorated and placed in a location of reverence. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it's so incongruous. The locals wouldn't be able to identify the animal it's intended to represent, and they certainly wouldn't be familiar with the material the statue is made from. There isn't any plastic in Paititi. I'd love to talk to whoever did this and learn why, what they think this penguin is. Too. That 
Wesley's been captured. I know. They're holding him at the barracks. We're working on a plan to release him. I tried to get him, I'm sorry. He's a warrior. What's that? Oh. This is a key. It looks like... It looks like it belonged to the mountain temple. It is adjacent to where they're holding him. Is the box of each shell connected to the barracks? Is that why the cult occupy the temple? It's heavily guarded. When we go in, it has to be subtle, silent. Is there a back way? Th there was one by the salt mine, but it has deteriorated. It's treacherous. I might be able to manage it. Perhaps. You did survive the sacrificial pit. I haven't been back inside since I was a child. But from what I can remember, the barracks are within an inner stronghold. If I can get in through the back way, I can clear a path and let you in. We will free Epsley, then go find the box. I'll take care of my son. You go after the box. Trying to keep a low profile. I would go. Only I can't abandon my post here, and time is running short. It would mean a lot to Queen Himalatu and the rebellion. 29th of November, 1603. After dinner, Lopez left the city. I followed, worried he might not return. I found him standing by the riverbank, lips moving as though in prayer. Not wishing to disturb him, I waited. His communion with God must have lasted through the night and I regret to admit I fell asleep. For the next thing I knew, Lopez stood smiling serenely over me, the morning sun behind him, creating a halo. He helped me to my feet and clasped me in a strong embrace. Truilos, I know where to find the artifact, he whispered in my ear. Hey, Laura. You... Uchu and I were talking and, well... Uchu, what's on your mind? The day of Edsley's coronation is approaching. Soon he will be a man and take the first steps towards becoming Paititi's future king. Oh, that sounds like a day to look forward to. It's the hope for that day that keeps a lot of us fighting Amaru and his cult. Sometimes we all need to remember what we're fighting for. Is there something I can help you with? When Edsley's father Sairi died, Unaratu bestowed the honor of surrogate father onto me. One of my duties is to gather three sacred items for the ceremony, but... But with all that's happening right now, you aren't able to. What are these items? They are the Savior's amulet, the Champion's bow, and the King's horn. Each a blessing from the ancestors of the future King. Tell me what you need, and I'll see what I can do. I already have men retrieving the amulet and bow. But if you could find Kabil, the instrument maker, and get the King's horn from him, you would be doing us a great favor. He's been difficult. I sent two men and both have failed. Perhaps you could talk to his wife. I think I can manage that. Be mindful. Kabil can be prickly sometimes, but Abra, his wife, has a way of dulling his edges. I don't have enough space for that. 